hello welcome back to my channel thank you for coming back as always huge massive thank you for the support so i did say um this weekend that i was going to do another like project card um and i had a little search around um i did find something else that i liked um and we're going to use the little pocket pad which comes as the sort of um there is the free gift which is free or you can buy the 12.99 which includes a load of other things and one of the things it includes is the matching pocket pad, pocket pad which is amazing um i'm also going to be using one of the papers from the insert and paper pack um and then an extra um purchase was the foiled edge to edge cardstock so i'm going to be using that just for that bit of bling now i know before somebody did say to me that they would find it easier if they could see what they were aiming for before i started making it and i don't usually do that but because this is quite new to me i did have a little quick play um, and this is what we are aiming to do so it's a normal side by uh, side fold six by six but you've got these arrow arrow head sort of pieces on the side and this is um from well i oh, i saw um sue stampfield um she does um stamping up i think she's um uh you know one of those people that sort of sells the things um but she also does videos as well and you can be in her club and that she always has some really amazing different folds um but um normally for smaller cards so i know you guys in america you like the smaller cards because you post um hunky dory always seem to do really massive big ones um i know natalie blessed did try and make a smaller card the other week and then ended up having loads adding loads of things onto it and then it got bigger and bigger so i think they just tend towards those bigger um sizes but this um i've just tried to do it to fit what i normally use so that if you do happen to go out and buy six by 12 cardstock i'm giving you loads of different ways to make loads of different cards um so they're not too samey if you want to make the same card all the time that's fine as well because you know it's hunky dory it's going to look fantastic whatever you do um but i just like to give you options on that six by 12 and i don't think it's such an odd size for for you guys in america i know six by six is a big card for you guys but it's not eight by eight is it so it's achievable and if you struggle to get the six by twelve card stock you can just get a 12 by 12 piece of white card and cut it in half you've got two six by twelves then okay so let's get started so i am going to need my trimmer first of all let's bring that in so this card is going to take two pieces of six by twelve so one is going to be made into the six by six card so we'll fold that in a second and then i need two pieces that are going to be five by six and these are going to make our little sort of arrow squishy pitch squishy things that go on the side like fins so we've got a piece left over for another time we'll pop that out of the way for a second and we'll do the folds first of all move you out of the way as well because you are in my eye line um and we'll start with the easy one first of all so just going to take this score it down the six inch mark and i'm going to fold that over to make my six by six card blank and i'll give this a proper burnish down in a second now these two pieces are exactly the same so we're putting them in so the five inches along the top six inches on the length going down and i'm going to score at one and a half three three and three quarters and four and a half okay so do exactly the same on the second piece so again we're going one and a half three three and three quarters and four and a half okay so let's pop that out of the way so that's all the scoring that i need to do today in my little burnishing tool so i'm just going to fold all of these lines get them all burnished down and then we'll work out which way they need to go so it's just a question of making sure that they're going to bend nice and easy and flex for me because obviously 
in order to get this back in a card envelope because the beauty of that is that is going to go in just a slightly oversized six by six or if you do shop from hunky dory you could even get there they have some box envelopes and they have the thin ones and they have the the deep ones and this would go in the thin one for sure okay so when this is made up and i'm going to decorate one piece of it first of all it's going to go together like that okay and the same with that one so that bit is going to fold in that is my gluing edge so it's going to go like so so you've got um a mountain a mountain actually is that a valley you know that one's a valley a mountain valley i think that's right anyway you're going to end up with that a nice little arrow shape okay so what i'm going to do now is I'm going to do the cutting on the layers when I put this one together what I did is I put it all together and then when it comes to getting this one on it's a little bit tricky because this is made up so what I wanted to do was put the layer on before I made it up just this one just to make it easier on myself could even do that one as well let's bring in the trimmer I'm going to start with a piece of gold mirror card now these pieces here are one and a half by six so I'm going to do two pieces that are going to be actually yeah we'll do it this side it'll be fine two notches shorter than one and a half and then two notches shorter than one and a half And then we can take two notches off the six. Get rid of that one and two notches off the six. And then I'm going to grab a piece of this scrap card. So this one here, or if I show you on here, this one here is um, three quarters of an inch by six. So I'm just going to take two notches off that three quarters and two notches off that three quarters, one for each side and then we're going to take two notches off that six. And two notches off that six. Okay, so for the um, sides, I'm going to use this foiled edge to edge cardstock because I think it looks it's a bit in your face, it grabs your attention. So I need to go uh, one and a quarter. So if I do it on this side, one and a quarter inches, and I need two pieces of that, one and a quarter. All I'm using of that and then that needs to be five and three quarters nice piece there we'll pop that to four another time so five and three quarters and that should fit onto that panel quite nicely and it does okay and then I'm going to just swap trimmers Or am I? Because that is going to be harder with that one. Okay, we'll try it with here. We might have to neaten it up a bit. Sometimes the paper doesn't cut so well on this trimmer. But because this measurement is um, half an inch, it's going to be difficult on the other one. So we're going to go to half an inch. Okay, so that's done okay so far. And half an inch. Um, I'm going to do the middle bit once I've assembled it all 
so we'll do these layers first of all so five and three quarters Let's see it doesn't like that Ooh, we can do is the other trimmer for that let's go to that trimmer just doesn't like paper too much that trimmer and I think it's the same with the hunky dory one they look like the insert paper too much so let's just gently ease that into five and three quarters Clean that up and five and three quarters into the naughty again okay so let's assemble these layers first of all we'll put that to the side because we will need that piece of gold in a minute and um, for these I'm going to use a mixture because it's paper I'm going to use a mixture of the Kalau all-purpose glue and the dotty tape pen so I'm just going to put dotty tapes in top middle and bottom and then just to give me a little bit of wiggle room time just going to pop my all-purpose in the middle and then I should be able to not drop it all over the place should be able to drop it in sort of float it to where we want it to be and with those glue dots they are they do allow you to move things for a little minute or so straightest in the world. Let's just move this piece over, just gently easing it up of them dots and over. I think that's going to do. And then the same again here, just fiddly because it's such a small piece. You could leave it out I think but it's just because the one I've seen was um, decorated. I kind of thought it would be nice to do it the same and then you've got the option of leaving it out if you want to. That's a bit easier if I don't put the dots in the middle. Okay, so there's those two. These ones I'll just do my normal glue, so tacky glue in the corners instead of the dotty tape pen. Squash down, make sure it makes connectivity. You see how much it moves around um, if you allow it to. Okay, so I'm just going to take a quick drink. Sorry, I've got a really dry throat today. And what I'll do is while we just give those a minute also to set, I'll take some red liner tape. Now, there's no reason why you couldn't use your all purpose glue or your tacky glue at home. Um, I'm doing this because I want to do it on the video. I want to get it all finished for you rather than have to keep stopping and starting because my camera doesn't like that. Um, but you could definitely use um, any number of different glues besides your red liner tape, pin it, uh, and let it set. Give it a couple of minutes just to go off, if you know what I mean. Okay. So hopefully those will be done shortly. Now, when I put this together on my card, let me bring this one in and show you, the join is at the front here. And the reason I did that is because when the join is at the back, it is kind of noticeable to the eye. But if, I, if you put it so that it's on the front side like that, it's actually hidden under a layer so it's not quite as noticeable. So I'm going to do the same again on this one. 
So if I straighten this out for a minute, this is going to be my front panel. Um, so I'm not going to do that one yet. Let's just see. Alright, so with this way, so this one here, this first piece is going to be my decorated piece. So I'm going to pop some all-purpose glue. You can use your dotty tape pen if you want to make sure that stays there. And I'm just going to check it again once I've put it on just to make sure that that is where I want it to be. So that is going to be on the front of my card like so. And yes, that's going to be in the right place. So you want to be able to see that. Okay. Um, I won't do that front panel yet. I'll do the same on the other side. So again, that's going to be at the front. So it needs to be on this side. The only thing you're probably going to have to be aware of is if you have got a paper that has got a certain direction, I would say you're probably better off just having that little bit of difficulty squidging it in um, once it's made up, just so that you make sure you get it the right way up. Okay, so we just double check that that is right again. So that is going to be at the front, it's going to be on that side. Oh, that is going to be fine. Okay, so going back to this one, I can come in with this. A little bit of glue there. This one, yeah, needs to be again. Just be aware of your directions. This one hasn't really got one. It's the same up or down. I didn't do that on purpose, but now I'm quite glad that I did. Otherwise, we could have all gone horribly wrong already. Like I say, if you're in any doubt, wait until you make it up. It's not so. These ones are not so difficult. It's just a little bit fiddly to get your hands in there. Um, in for this one once it's made up because that is quite a small crease um, but it's not impossible I got quite chunky hands and, and I managed to do it okay so let's start to do some assembling so just going to take off your tape backing I'm just going to put some tacky glue at the corner I found the easiest way to do this was to squash it right down and fold that over on top and then you've got your your diamond or your arrowhead should I say okay, same again on this one take that backing off a little bit of tacky glue on there best of both worlds little embraces as they say sometimes just give that a little press down and move that over and then you've got your second one like so Okay, so the next bit is nice and easy as well because all you're going to do, you can use some red liner tape if you want to. I didn't on that other one, it worked out okay. And actually having the movability factor of it is probably quite key. I'll just make sure I've got my card the right way. And this one's going on the left hand side, just making sure that's butted right up. And then I'm going to give that a little press down. Just make sure that's nice and flush. And then same again on the other side. And you can see it comes together really easy. If you can make a small box, you're not going to struggle with this at all. And again, just pop that on. Butt it up to the edge. Give it a good press down so that it makes a good connection. And that is the actual mechanics and part of the decoration of the card done. Now, when I did this inside edge on my practice card, I did it at two notches under the three because officially this space is supposed to be three inches. 
but it does look like I could have got a little extra notch on so I am going to try just doing an extra notch but I may trim it again so this is me trying it first just to see if I can get a slightly different look to my first one so I'm bringing in this trimmer just because it's easier and um, I'm just going to take it to one notch under the three and then it's going to be two notches under the six because we've still got the normal length and then I'm going to pop that in and actually I think I prefer that better so I'm going to keep that as it is um, and then I'm going to bring in this paper again this is going to be the decor decoration that's why I've got it on the outside to sort of tie everything together and this will need to be three notches under the three just for that tiny little border all the way around one two three and then it's going to be five and three quarters that should fit onto there quite nicely and it does so let's assemble that bit and then we can move on to the topper so again this is paper so I don't use the um, tacky glue on this because of the water content oops so I'm going to throw my glue around for a second and then I'm going to decide to put my all-purpose glue on the back Obviously, if you wanted to mix it up even further, you could have those going in. It still would match, you know, the woody side. So all these papers are double-sided, so, and they are designed to coordinate with each other, which is, you know, half the work done for you, trying to figure out which goes with which. I actually really love this brown. I don't know why. Maybe it's, maybe it looks like beer. You know, like in a mug where you get the bubbles and things. I don't know. It's not that I particularly like beer. I prefer a shandy to a beer, if I'm honest, but um, or lager. But I do like this pattern, and I think it really goes with almost all of the topper sets um, in that for, for the gents collection. There we go. So you can see that really brings that in. And to life so that's what we've got this is coming on a lot faster than I thought it would okay so now we can turn to our little pad and um, the only thing you have to be aware of I suppose is that you do want an image that is um, portrait rather than landscape um, so the one that I thought would work well, the one that I decided I was going to use was the one with the beer and the burger. Although that one would look quite nice, but um, I did think this was sort of more, you know, sort of one of those restaurants you go in sometimes that they've got the mirror de patterned on the wall. But the food is not always that great, but on a night out, you never mind quite so much, do you, unless you've specifically gone out to eat. There we go. So I think I'm going to take two because I think what I'll do is decoupage it. So let's pop that out of the way. I'm going to bring my trimmer back in. Now I do need to trim this down a little bit because um, this is three inches across. Um, I don't mind this being three inches. Check what bubble there. Let me just get rid of that. It's just where the, it's not stuck properly. I don't mind it being um, three inches in size with the gold on, um, but I am going to need to take a bit off it so that I can do that. So I can see on this side we've only got a narrow edge. That's got a little bit more that we can do on that side. So let's take this. So it's actually one, nearly one notch under three. Let's take it to one, two, three notches under the three. And then I don't need to worry about that one because I'm cutting that one out. Then I'm going to need another piece of gold. So I will use a mat. And um, because that was three under three, I can take that to one notch under three. 
I'm not sure on the length. So that is four and one, two, three notches. So we need to go to four and a quarter plus one notch. That should fit quite nicely onto there, she says. And then I'm just going to double check that that is going to fit in there quite nicely. Now, if you wanted to trim that down a little more, you could do. I'm going to leave that as that is, I think. Shall I take a little bit more? Let's take a little bit more. Let's take maybe another notch. And then a tiny bit off that side, just so we've got that. Looking to have that little bit of separation, but there's not going to be because of the image. So, let's go a little bit more. Let's just, if you're happy with it, then just leave it as where, you, where you're happy at. But I'm just trying to get it set. There's just a little bit of the background coming through. Let's just take. where we're going to have to leave it otherwise we're going to be cutting into the beers I think we're just about on the same level as that yeah. so we're about the same as the mat more or less just come here oh, I can't pick it up there you go so those are bits of gold that we can save for another day that is rubbish right the other thing I'm going to do is just bring in my corner rounder just so that it looks like a topper. If you've got, got any other fancy corners, of course you could use it. You could also use this if you've got the um, tag die set. Hunky dory, um, is it decorative tag? I've got it, I can't remember what it's called. You could possibly die cut this and and then bring it to life, I'm sure it would fit under there. Just making sure I press these down. This keeps coming up with the odd bubble underneath, I'm not quite sure why, but you won't see that when the top is on top of it anyway. That's one of the benefits of a nice big topper. Um, so again, this is paper, so I'm just going to use them same dots to keep that in position. on I kind of like that it looks like a menu board and do I want to no, we'll do the decoupage first and then we'll do the back so I'm just going to go around fussy cut all of these bottles and actually there is like a, a dark shadow you could just go to that if you wanted to I'm just going to I'm going just as quick as I can. So sometimes I just take away the biggest bits first of all. And I cut a lot better when I'm using my magnifying glass to be honest. I really do need to get my eyes tested again but it's not going to happen at the moment anyway. Haven't got the ability to get down there, and I'm not sick enough for them to come out to me. <laughs> not yet, anyway. There we go. So pop them in again. This is just very quick trimming, and I'm only going to do one layer because I don't like to use all of my sheets up. But if you wanted to go third or fourth layer, you could do. There are, I think, six sheets of each one. I'm sure it's six. Have a quick look if it says four, four design, four each. 
So I suppose because it's a smaller pad, isn't it? And if you've got like the little die cut books that they did recently with um, the little die cut pieces, that would be nice for this as well, this style of card. Because you could be popping the bits on wherever you want. And we've got our, our beers. Um, do I want to? No, I don't want to. So I'm just going to go around the bowl. And the burger. I'm not worrying about all the mess on the floor around it, the sort of sauce and stuff. I'm not really worrying about that. And just tidy that there, and it is. Okay, oh, I can see a little bit of blue there, and where's that bottle cap? There we go. There we go. I'm thinking now I really want to cut out the broken. I might do it. Let's see, let's see. Okay, let's get this one on, and we might. Oh, I'm going to do it because that's off. it's in my head now and it won't leave until I do it. Right, come here, you. We're going to cut down the burger in a second. Okay, so let's pop this bit on. So I've got some one millimetre foam pads. Let's use some of these bits up. And. Uh, Across there, I cut that one in half. Hopefully, we should be able to get that pretty much up to the bottom. That one will go up to the bottom. There. Here. with it being paper I'd rather put more on than less so if it looks like it might need a little bit of support that should be fine I'll pop it on Everyone's a bit upset about creating craft because that's not coming back. It's gone under. Um, so I'm just going to pop just worried about that little bottle top there. Yeah, so they're all sad. People, a lot of people lost their jobs and not far from me so uh, it is quite sad. I used to go past the uh, the old studios when they used to be in Peterborough because uh, my sister used to work down, uh, work down the, uh, the road from them and uh, I used to have to drive past to go and pick her up. Okay let's just pop that into there. They're still hobby makers, so it's not like we haven't got anything. Right, so I'm just chopping around this bun. I'm not worried about the chips. Sadly, goodbye chips. And then around this bit of lettuce. say that but I accidentally they accidentally left it on on my burgers and I ate it and it was really nice it's not something I like 
just that one occasion when I accidentally ate it where I did actually enjoy it. I'm just going around this lettuce, around this bun. Just around that corner off a little bit. Oh, that's a beer bottle there. I'm like, why is that burger hanging over? That's because that's a beer bottle. Oops. There we go confused me. Okay, so more foam pads. One, two, like I say, I'm going to put plenty on there. And a bit down that bottom side, should be fine. And I think the sentiment, I'm going to find one from one of my little books, the sentiments. I've got two. I'm not sure what the years are. I think one is 2019. I think the other is 23. Might be 22. I'm not sure, but if you wanted to uh, nick one of the sentiments out of the actual kit itself, you could do. Oh, now that's looking nice, isn't it? That's making me hungry. I'm just happy dinner. Really, really must stop crafting with food and chocolate. Alright, so a little bit of all purpose and tacky, and then we can just ease that in. I think go around about there for that. Now, for my little box of sentiments, I've got. Like I said, I've got two of the Christmas one as well. Not sure where the rest of that book is. I think it might have fallen down the back. Now, ideally, we want something red and gold, which we have got in that first one. I don't think there's any red in this one. So brown, that would go nicely. What have we got? Just for you, for the world's greatest dad on Father's Day. I'm kind of looking for a long one, I think. Those would kind of go, but they're female. And what we've got here, brown, they're nice. To the world's best brother, to a great son, may all your wishes come true. Love and special wishes, husband, to a fantastic son in law with love, to a special gentleman, best fiance, friend, and future husband. World's best brother, let's keep that one open. What have we got on here? Especially for you, brother, to a very special boy, wonderful father-in-law, a wonderful boyfriend, to a lovely uncle, especially for my fiance, to my favourite grandson. I think that's going to fit in there quite nicely. I know you're not supposed to have favourites and stuff, but we'll do, don't we? The first one is usually up there because that's the one you spend the most time with in terms of you know they were born first I certainly know Anthony was mum's favourite but then again she did spend a lot of time with him she did really raise him for a long time okay so let's get those backs off some tacky glue on. And I'll turn you around the right way. Pop you in. There we go. So we've got two of my favourite grandson. Um, in terms of 
gems. We could go gold. Uh, let's have a little look, see what else we've got. Could even come in with a bit of green. Uh, got those lucky blue ones. Got those ones. Uh, I don't think we want to go pearls. Let's just chop. This is some like chocolate brown ones here. They might be nice. I love the fact that they're on clear plastic so you can see what they look like. They don't really show up though, do they? Those caramel coloured ones do. Let's go with them. I don't think that one should look nice. So us the grey. Let's try the green. Oh, the green look nice. Oh. Decisions, decisions, let's pop you back in there. I don't think that's where you came from, but that's where you're going. I think I'm going to go with green because we've got red here from the dirt tomato. We've got the browns for the beer all over. So let's go with these greens. Do I want to go dark green? No, we want to go light. Okay, so let's grab, let's get rid of those. We didn't even consider the gold. And I think I'm going to go one big one in those two corners. And then I'm going to go with a medium one. Oops. In the bottom corner. do is go with two little ones on there and one there. let's go for a bigger one rather than and the bigger one there okay so all that needs now is that insert those there for a second out the way um so yeah so that's just it folds down flat like so to go into um an envelope um so you will get that into like i say an oversized six by six envelope or if you have got them some of those hunky dory little boxes which are really worth having um i think you get quite a few as well for your money and they're not expensive um well i don't think they're expensive compared to you know other boxes that I've seen elsewhere but let me bring in that first one that I did my little trial one this paper just in case you were wondering it actually came from an old pad um, a special days one and it was a double sided where's the L's yeah so it was red on one side which is what everybody should have had when I started driving um, and blue for normal people who drive but then it did take me a while to pass my test and I think I did nudge three cars within a week of me passing my test honestly I was so nervous being on my own but anyway that is that um, for the gents pocket pad card um, Sue calls it a double arrowhead card so it's as good as name as any a fun fold so um, I'll call it the same on my Pinterest and on Facebook as well. I um, hope you've enjoyed this little project today. It is something slightly different and it does frame up these little pocket pads quite well. Um, I think if you took it to 8x8 and, and did the same measurements, you would then have uh six seven eight so three you would have five inches in the middle which probably would be the right size for um your normal like pads um or at least you'd be able to cut some of the toppers down to that size but i'll put photos up um just before um the video goes up and you have to let me know what you think but thank you so much for spending time with me today have a good weekend and happy crafting bye